Okay, so I have my profile cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and I'm going to put it completely vertical or as vertical as I can maintain it. And I'm going to cut out each one of these profiles for my elevator following this paper cutout. Okay, so there's one. There's two. And now I'm going to remove my profile. And then I'm going to follow just this, this elevated ridge right here on each side. There's one. And there's two. Let's see how close we were able to get these. Yeah, so if you look at the profiles there, they are pretty darn close to each other. Be a little bit off on one edge, but I don't think that's going to make a whole lot of difference. I think we've gotten it as close as we can. So now that we have these profiles cut, what I am going to do is now I'm going to trim off just a little bit on the inside edge so that we have a little bit of a gap between our control surface and the stationary part of the horizontal elevator. So I'm going to trim off about oh, two millimeters off of this control surface. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Alright, I think that will work. We will just want to make sure that when we are actuating our control surface that we're not going to be binding on the stationary horizontal stabilizer. So I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Cut off about two millimeters. And let's see what kind of gap we've got here. Oh, I need to cut off a little bit more of that one. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think that's good. I think that'll give us enough clearance. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to take it and we want to bevel. And I'm going to bevel about, oh, 30, 35 degree angle on each one of these. And it will help because these are so thin. Um, it would help if you have something to actually press down and hold it. So I'm going to trim this up. See what we've got. Didn't quite cut all the way through it. Okay. So, on this control surface with full deflection, we've got, I think we've got plenty of deflection on that one. And then we want to do the same thing to the other side. Let's make sure, we want to make sure that we are beveling 
the correct edge. Okay. Not enough. Okay, so let's see what we got. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think we've got plenty of deflection there on both of our control surfaces. Okay, we're back with the modification of the horizontal stabilizer and elevator assembly. I have thrown out my previous ideas and I think I have come up with a much better solution on tying these two control surfaces together. So the process that I used was I've cut this center section right where if you drew a line all the way across from where we cut out the control surfaces for the elevator that's where I cut the center section and I cut it all almost all the way through left a little bit of foam at the end so I could just you know fold it over and then what I did because this because this um, piece of um, control rod that I use to link these two control surfaces together is not located at the very top of the pivot point you're going to get a little bit of movement up and down on that wire when you actuate the control surface not much but enough that it was causing a little bit of binding when i had this center section um, closed up all the way so what i did was i used my exacto knife marked the location where the wire was going through the center section and just cut out a very tiny channel you don't you don't want to cut out any more than you have to because the center section is going to hold that wire in place you just want to remove enough material that when this center section is glued back together it's not causing any binding issues on your control surfaces and as you can see they're linked together fairly well I don't have anything glued at this point. Um, I'm going to take it, take the assembly apart and show you the components that I used, what I did to, to put this together. And, and then I'm going to give you some tips on putting this together and testing it before you glue anything together. You've already seen the tutorial for how we made the um, flap rons on the main wing with the um, tape hinges I'm going to use the same process for the tape hinges for the elevator assembly but I took a, a piece of one millimeter control wire and it's very rigid and very stiff and I bent it so that it the center section goes through the the line where the control surfaces the elevators are going to attach to the main wing section and then I bent these out so that this wire was is uh, going into the control surface at the edge about two millimeters into the control surface on each one of them and I made it long enough I would say about three quarter uh, maybe about 80 percent the length of the control surface from this line where it attaches so it will make it you know very rigid but what I found was I took my um, soldering iron and tried burning, you know, a, a pocket for these wires. And I took a little piece of this, um, it's basically a plastic straw, but it's what you typically find on aerosol cans like WD-40, um, also on um, compressed air cans. And the inside diameter is such that this wire will go in and slide in nice and easily in and out of that uh, piece of plastic tube that plastic straw and it's tight enough that there's not going to be any play in it so what I did was I cut two sections of that 16 millimeters long and what what this is going to do because when you actuate when you actuate the elevator assembly the section of wire because it's it's not at the very top of the pivot point it's it's going to move inside this cutout that I made at the edge of the elevators about 
two millimeters. So what this, what, what I'm going to do with these little sections of straw is I'm going to glue those into these little pockets I created with my soldering iron and that's not the best tool to use. I can tell you right now what I'm going to do when I do this again is I'm either going to use my X-Acto knife to create these pockets or I'm going to try and find a smaller diameter multi-purpose cutting tool for my Dremel because I think that would the, any one of those two methods would be a better way of creating these pockets rather than using a soldering iron because it really messed up the tips quite a bit. So learn from my mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces of plastic um, straw from the aerosol can that I've cut to, to 16 millimeters in length and I'm going to glue those into the edge of the wing on each side of the of the elevators and then this wire will be held in by the center section and then the um, the pieces of tube are going to fit right over each wire the pieces of tube that I glue onto the elevator and it's going to work like a like a piston inside a sleeve in the block of an engine so it's going to hold it there's not going to be any play in it so when it when it when you actuate one elevator it will it will actuate the other one the same way my suggestion is create those pockets glue in the pieces of tubing get your wire bent like you want to like you need to for uh, to, to slide into each one of those uh, plastic straws and make sure that both sides of this wire lay down flat. When you lay this down you want to make sure that there's no twist in that wire. When you first connect these don't make your permanent don't make your permanent tape hinges to begin with. Use painters tape like I've done. Put them in place after you've glued after you've glued these sleeves into the ends of your elevator put your wire in to each one of your um, sleeves that you've attached to your elevator and actuate them make sure that when you pull one elevator down and you put it in the neutral position where it lines up with the center section that the other one lines up exactly the same way because if you don't get if you don't get these sleeves in perfectly, and chances are you, you might not, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to, you're going to need to bend this wire in accordance with where, the, where your other control surface is. So if I put this side of the control surface in neutral and this one's up a little bit high, then I'm going to have to take this um, wire and I'm going to have to bend one of those down a little bit. If it's low, then I'm going to have to bend that side up a little bit. But you want to make sure before you make your permanent tape hinges that when you put one side in the neutral position, the other one lines up exactly the same way. Once you get that completed, then it will be time to go ahead and permanently attach your elevators to your control surfaces and uh, your elevators to the main portion of the horizontal stabilizer. And then if you're not getting any binding, when you close this center section back up, then you're able, you'll be able to go ahead and glue that section back in. Make sure that when you complete that, that you don't have any binding in your control surface. So what I'm going to do at this point, now that you know the process and the parts and pieces that I'm using to fabricate this, I'm going to go ahead and complete the fabrication on this and get it all put together so that you can see how it actuates the it's rigid enough that when I put my control horn on this side and actuate it, it's going to actuate the other side exactly the same way. And, I, there, and it should be a completely smooth, non-binding motion on both of these control surfaces. So I will be back as soon as I complete the fabrication. Okay, I have completed the fabrication and assembly of my horizontal stabilizer and elevator controls and everything's glued together it's not all cured yet um, I glued it together about three or four hours ago it takes 24 hours for the glue to cure as you can see uh, putting these two in the neutral position they are both at the same level at the neutral position they are both linked together and I have plenty of upward and downward movement deflection and they are connected 
So um, that completes the assembly of our horizontal stabilizer and elevator assembly. Um, there was absolutely no binding. Now when I glued this back together, the center piece that um, I had cut almost all the way through, just a little piece of the little layer of foam on the very bottom was holding together. So I was very conservative with the amount of glue that I put back in there because you don't want to glue your, um, your wire into the foam. So I was very conservative, put a, a, a very small bead of glue around the bottom and then around the top. I also put a little piece of packing tape around the inside edge of our sleeves after I glued them in just for a little additional reinforcement. So, and I created the tape hinges on the elevator exactly the same way that I created the tape hinges on the flap rods. So, um, they're good and solid and no axial play. So, I will see you in the next segment.